Right. Well, First United Methodist Church, we are here for our story. And uh, the reason we're calling this our story is because we are all a part of the story of this amazing church. And so we're here today with Jim and Sheila Sosby, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you in just a moment and just uh, get an opportunity to hear a little bit of your story. So thank you guys so much for being willing to share. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you. Why don't you guys share who you are and kind of a little bit of your story, how you find yourself here in this place. Well, I'm Sheila Sosby. I was Sheila Biggers coming along and we moved to Lawrenceville in 1972. So I was eight years old when I landed here and we came here right at the end of the school year. And one of the first things we went to that I thought was the coolest thing ever was camp meeting. <laughs> and we had a little pop-up camper and we camped out there and did that for many years. Um, this church, this location was not where we went. We went to the, what's presently the theater, mm -hmm. um, Aurora Theater mm -hmm. over there. So it looked a little different back then. Um, there was a bell tower and my little third grade Sunday school class met right in the bell tower, you could climb up, but we weren't allowed to do that, but we sure wanted to. Um, so it was just a really neat place. My mom and dad were very active in the Methodist Church. I come from generations in the Methodist Church. My uh, great, great, great grandfather was a Methodist preacher, we found out uh, when finding his tombstone a few years ago. And so um, I've been in this for many generations of my family. We had the greatest camp meeting ever. We really created the legend that is camp the meeting. The legend of camp meeting. The, the, mm -hmm. Yes, what we did and the stuff that goes back, it's really from my generation. We're the ones who did it all. <laughs> not but, all good stuff. Either. Not all good, yeah, <laughs> yeah, some things we don't need to share. But um, anyway, Jim came over and we found ourselves at when I was about 15 and he was 16 at the campground and um, he started, he talked to me, so we talked and we sat on the back of the uh, benches, which you weren't supposed to sit on the top of them, but we did, and we talked until they finally just cut the lights out on us because <laughs> they wanted us to leave presumably. But that was the beginning of our romance. And um, we began dating uh, a few months after that. Um, and dated for about five and a half years before we got married. We got married in this church. It's now the sanctuary that exists today. And um, children raised here, children baptized here. It's a beautiful story. <laughs> Jim, do you, do you have anything to add to that beautiful story? <laughs> that, that's such an amazing... That sums it up very well. I, I would just have to say that um, it... it to me, it's a testament to how important youth yeah. are. And for uh, never underestimate, I've always told, because when we first got married, we really had a passion and love for youth. So pre-babies, we worked with the youth. And some of our former youth were Stan Carpenter, John Shambly, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Johnsons, Michael Johnson. And, uh, and that's great looking back on that. But I can remember us telling them, never underestimate who you may sit with mm -hmm. out at camp meeting. You may end up being married to them. You talk about the Joy class and the Wesley class kind of being there for you when you were raising your kids. Mm -hmm. And now your group of friends really finds yourself in, in that, you know, you've got grown kids and, mm -hmm. and maybe grandkids on the way and, and uh, 
talk to me about some of the things that you guys have found yourselves now involved in, some of the ways you're serving and giving back, because um, I know you guys are involved in lots of things. One of the things most recently that I can recall is uh, before all the COVID thing broke out was the Christmas, uh, what is it, the, the, when the children come here for the Christmas presents. Christmas like, extravaganza. Thank extravaganza. you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the Christmas extravaganza. And um, that was just a delightful thing to see. Um, and it wasn't necessarily just kids here in this church, but in this community. Mm. And... Um, We've delivered some food around for the folks around here. Um, something that I'm involved in in the community is Bible Study Fellowship, BSF. Yeah. So um, I'm finding myself um, trying to bring along some of the ladies that are around my daughter's age. Mm -hmm. And my daughter's not always involved, but it's, it's other people and their children. Um, it's been a year of having to think outside the box. Yes, it has. <laughs> this year there is no box. There is no box. Yes. That's right. We're just uh, in the outside the box virtually all the time. And, uh, and that's been different. I think that it's probably caused us to realize that no matter where we are or what we're doing, be it at the grocery store, or uh, anywhere in the community mm -hmm. that we are the hands and feet of this church. Mm -hmm. We feel very blessed that we have a staff that realizes the dire needs, really, during this kind of season of COVID, and they've answered those needs. Mm -hmm. And there have been lots of different and unusual ways that people could respond now that may that just didn't look like you know this pre pre covid time so again thinking outside the box i love it I love it well this is stewardship season and so part of what we're talking about is is how we can invest our our, our whole lives in mm -hmm. what we do here at the church. And so any thoughts you have on that in general? I'll tell you this, when she was, uh, she's retired from the school system. Mm -hmm. When she was in the school system, her life was the school system. Mm -hmm. And so I found that I was, tended to be the checkbook manager. And I'll never forget Five or six pastors ago, a gentleman stood up in our pulpit who was our pastor and he said, all you need to do is pull out someone's checkbook and you'll see where their heart is. I don't know how much that hung with her, but it really hit me between the eyes. And he said, not only that, look at the dates of which things are written and whether or not it becomes the first fruits. Mm -hmm. So, Back during that season, I don't know, I don't know why she's tearing up, but she is. Back during that season, I, I tended to be with a checkbook. And now that she's retired, she has taken that over. I would just encourage any couple to make sure that you mutually do that. Mm -hmm. We never mm -hmm. know when someone uh, may untimely leave us and mm -hmm. go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But we need to be aware of that. And that's a, um, you must be able to keep the facilities and staff on board mm -hmm. in order to uh, have a good um, ministry. Well, we've, we've kind of uh, told the story of the Sosby family here today a little bit. Uh, as you think about your lives and, and your family's life and this church, what do you hope the next chapter looks like for this church, for your involvement, for, uh, for how we engage the community? Talk to me about what your hopes are for, for this place and what God might do here. I'm ready to have a place that's COVID-free. And 
I think that I will, I appreciate the church so much more. You know, sometimes, let's just face it, there may have been a Sunday, oh, I'm tempted to sleep in or whatnot, but now I just want to come to church. And so that's just the here and now, but I want this church to continue on. It's been here for now centuries, and I want to keep it strong and keep it there for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. So um, what I see myself doing, I, I wanna get some of these things cranked back up again and I'm gonna help along, I'm gonna pay it forward uh, just the same way that it was done for us. That's what I want to do. Think about the early church and the early church was about fellowship hmm. be it in the home or in a tabernacle and we're not meant to live alone hmm. probably one of the things that has hurt the most during the COVID season is it's left so many people alone so if we can just always remember in moving forward in a time of uh, being able to Zoom, and, and that's, that's uh, wonderful because Zoom has at least allowed us to reach out and touch, but that's the gift of, of Christ in the church is the love that we experience one with another.